Madam Chairman, I think I had a request. Yes, I know, but what the mayor says makes sense in the order, in the sequence of things. So 9I. Item 9I is a request <coughs> by Honigman, Miller, Schwartz, and Kahn on behalf of Starwood Wasserman to review the site plan for Arbor Drugs at 2950 Howe Road. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, Ms. Manns, would you care, or let's see here. No. Uh, Mr. Clark, would you care to um, elaborate on this? I know that the um, request went to Mr. Zek. Perhaps Mr. Zek is the one. I'm sorry. Okay. I keep I have my hand up. around the room. I'm sorry. It's I right. wasn't watching. Well, it's anything. okay. Um, I'll, be, I'll be glad to start. I'm sure there will be others that will need to uh, participate in this. The, um, as you know from your council packet, I received a letter from Jeffrey Kravitz of Honigman, Miller, Schwartz, and Kahn relative to the Starwood Wasserman site plan for the proposed Arbor Drug Store at the southwest corner of Glenwood and Newburgh. Um, the letter is in your packet, and uh, it states that the Planning Commission at their last meeting, which was held one week ago, um, September 14th, um, had on their agenda th the site plan for the proposed store and voted to table to a later date consideration of that site plan. Um, Mr. Kravitz is asking that the council consider that site plan this evening. I've put into your packet a copy of a memorandum from the planning department which summarized the discussion that was had at the Planning Commission meeting. I've also included in your packet a copy of the memorandum that went to the Planning Commissioners from the Planning Department uh, discussing the proposed site plan. And then I've, I have included the application for site plan review, a location map uh, that delineates the parcels involved, as well as a copy of the Chapter 1276 of the City Zoning Ordinance, which covers site plan approval and what's involved and what parts, uh, what needs to be included on a plan, uh, what are the responsibilities of the Planning Commission, the, the uh, City Council and the staff, etc. cetera. Um, we did not list this item in with the uh, site plans that Ms. Manns just reviewed. Uh, as I did not want for uh, anyone on the council or anyone um, attending the meeting tonight or watching the meeting later or coming by City Hall over the last couple of days to look at the agenda. I didn't want anyone to uh, um, have a misunderstanding that this site plan was approved by the Planning Commission. It was not. It was tabled. And so I put it as a general item. And uh, my brief to you on Friday, I indicated to you that, uh, um, that uh, they have asked that you consider their site plan tonight. Um, I'm not sure I can provide any additional information at this point. Uh, possibly if there are some questions of the staff, uh, I, I can do that, or Ms. Manns can. Um, also present tonight are the other members of the site plan review team that work with her um, to review all plans, such as the five or six that you've gone over this evening. Mm -hmm. I'm not certain if Mr. Kravitz is in the audience. Yes, he is. There he is. He's got his hand up. Yeah. And um, so. Thank you, Mr. Zek. Um, is there any discussion here from council or I guess I'll start in. Oh, I'm sorry. Since we're up here, I'll okay. start. No, okay, sorry, fine. Mr. Um, I think Mr. Wasserman was first, though. Did I think we always start with the council, then we go to the audience, ma'am. That's fine. Thank you. First off, I don't appreciate the treatment you just gave me when I asked for an item to be moved up, and another item was subsequently put before it mm -hmm. that has similar um, consequences. Mm -hmm. um, I think by dealing with item 9M first, 
Then by dealing with item 9i, obviously uh, we're going to have some discussion regarding a referendum. True. And discussions regarding 9i can take place after 9m because of the way whatever happens uh, with this body on the referendum issue that we have before us, um, I think would probably play a role in this uh, site plan request by uh, Mr. Kravitz. So that's they definitely are going to um, play on each other, no doubt about it, Mr. Right. Dickerson. Right. They and are intertwined. Okay. Well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wasserman, am I correct? Kravitz. Kravitz. I'm sorry. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming to the podium. <coughs> Good evening, members of the council. My name is Jeffrey Kravitz of the law firm of Huntington Miller, Schwartz & Cohn. I represent the petitioner in this matter. Last Tuesday night, a site plan was presented to the Planning Commission for its review and action. The site plan had been reviewed by the planning staff as well as by members of the Planning Commission, and letters of comment were sent. My client was prepared last Tuesday night to submit a site plan that met in every respect the comments of both the staff and the Planning Commission. Notwithstanding that, a motion was immediately made to table consideration of the site plan on the basis that there was a lawsuit pending against the city and a referendum petition presented to the city clerk to consider uh, changing the zoning ordinance applicable to this property. Neither of those issues relate to the merits of the site plan. As to the litigation against the city, which I'm sure Mr. Clark can ably tell you, the temporary restraining order that had been issued by the court in favor of the plaintiffs was dissolved. A request to issue a preliminary injunction was denied by the court on the basis that there was no substantial likelihood that the plaintiffs would prevail in the litigation. Accordingly, the, the litigation is not an issue with respect to the consideration of the site plan. Furthermore, the issue of the referendum is also not a consideration with respect to the merits of the site plan. The issue before the Planning Commission last Tuesday was whether or not the site plan did or did not comply with the city zoning ordinance, and we submit that it does and did. Notwithstanding that, my client was denied due process by a failure of the Planning Commission to undertake its duties in either approving the site plan rejecting the site plan, or I should say recommending to the council approval of the site plan, rejection of the site plan, or recommending approval with conditions. The Planning Commission did none of the three duties that it was obligated to do under the ordinance. Instead, it tabled consideration. Accordingly, since this body, the Council of the City of Wayne, is the body that approves site plans, we request this evening that the Council consider the site plan uh, based on our submission and our agreeing to all of the comments of the City staff as well as the Planning Commission's comments uh, prior to last Tuesday's meeting and take action this evening. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to address them. Are there any questions from anyone up here in regard? I have a question to uh, our city attorney, uh, please, to, uh, to uh, hear his opinion about the action of the Planning Commission. Did the Planning Commission uh, deny to review the site plan uh, to the applicant uh, have any relation with the case? Possibly. Possibly. Again, I don't want to speak for the actions that might be taken by any other party to the litigation. Possibly their action could affect the case. Or inaction, I guess would be a better word. Madam Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. I think by it's Planning Commission tabling the issue, they're not denying uh, the developer's due process. 
the charter does not speak to a certain time frame that the planning commission has to approve or disapprove a site plan. Um, from what I understand, and I wasn't in attendance that night, that the issue was tabled, and for us to take any kind of action tonight, um, I think we would be, again, falling out of line with what is past practice and what uh, the planning commission uh, is recommending to us. By tabling the issue, all we're saying is we'll look at it down the road. How far down the road? They didn't give a date, but once we get to item 9M, I can give a date when we'll look at the site plan, when we'll look at some of the other issues. But um, to say we violated something, I mean, I read the, par the portions of the charter that was provided, and it, nowhere in there does it say how many days that uh, the planning commission has to um, uh, hear or not hear the plan. Uh, they didn't vote to approve it, nor did they vote to not approve it. All they did was table it. We've tabled items uh, as a body here before and brought them back to us at a later date for whatever reasons they were. I don't know what the reasons were behind their tabling it. Only the six individuals who voted to table it know why they voted <coughs> to table it. And um, if Arbors is looking for a site plan approval tonight by us, I mean, I would, you know, obviously we don't have... Uh, what we normally get in the site plan approval on the Friday packet where we have drawings and maps and the ability to call staff and ask questions. Um, if, you know, if that's what they're looking for here tonight, obviously none of us up here are prepared to listen to a site plan without the proper paperwork that we normally receive, such as the ones we just went over. Um, and again, once we review 9M um, and look at what we're going to have to decide on, um, that could play a role in scheduling a uh, Planning Commission meeting, Joint Council meeting, to hear the site plan. So. Thank you, Councilman Dickerson. However, I rather disagree in that um, I see that there is um, site plan review here that says what they are required to do. Uh, if you would feel more comfortable with Ms. Manns going through it, and um, I would imagine that would be allowable. <coughs> Mr. Zek? It's the pleasure of the Council, if you wish to have us make that presentation we are prepared to do it but I didn't want would to presume. Would you feel more comfortable with that then Mr. Dickerson? No you know what I don't I would not feel comfortable hearing the site plan after the planning commission um, tabled the site plan mm -hmm. and I would do so in a motion to um, not hear the site plan and have this body follow the planning commission and table it and that's a motion. I would support that motion. Um, is there any further discussion? Yes, I, um, I can't uh, support that motion. Uh, I feel the site plan review have nothing to do uh, with the pending case. I really do believe it's a, so they have the right to review their site plan like any other site plan. Whatever the, the future bring to feed the rezoning or not, that is totally different issue. Uh, therefore, I can support or vote for Mr. Dixon's motion. Any further discussion? Yes, I agree with Mr. Hayes. I don't. I don't feel that they were given due process through the planning commission. I feel that they should have acted on it approved it or disapproved it, just as their attorney has stated. And I would like to hear Mrs. Manns um, site plan review. I agree. Thank you. Ms. Manns, would you please? I think there's more. Oh, I'm sorry. That's true. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All and right. You know, before we take that roll, yes. um, is this one of the issues that takes uh, two-thirds of the council to overrule what the planning commission voted, Mr. City Attorney? No. Nope. It's a simple vote. matter of majority. Simple matter of Simple majority. Call it Mr. Question. Dickerson's motion is just asking is a simple majority. Well, if it relates to an issue taken from the Planning Commission that, that, that we dealt with on this issue before uh, regarding a Planning Commission decision, um, and we here we are going against a Planning Commission decision, doesn't it have to have the two-thirds? You're not going against the Planning Commission no, decision, decision because they have made no decision. You're, they made the, decision the, motion, they the motion that you made was not to hear a site plan presentation. That's the only motion that was made that will rise and fall in the simple majority vote of the council. Madam Chair, let's Thank call you. the question. 
Thank Mr. you. Mr. Mayor, hold on. I need a clarification before we vote. I thought I we thought just got I thought that he gave I, clarification. Well, not, near, not really, because looking back at the situation when, and I don't have the ordinance in front of me, but where it talks about the Planning Commission did make a decision. Their decision was to table it. Now, my question to the City Attorney was that if my motion is rephrased in a different way, will the two-thirds majority have to prevail in order to listen to the site plan? <laughs> I don't know what your motion might be, Mr. Dickerson, so it's very I difficult for me to well, it's just respond. Madam Chair, we have a motion on the floor. Like we are to going to motion. vote on the motion. I Please, will you restate the motion, Madam Clerk? Clerk. I, I have another. Uh, after we take a roll call on this one, I would like to make another motion. That the is motion fine. motion that was presented by Councilman Dickerson and supported by Councilwoman Dobrovolsky is to deny the request to review the site plan and to table it based on the recommendation of the planning commission i don't know that we have a recommendation from the planning commission to, to table it that's the recommendation you want a roll call vote that was not the recommendation that's just their action taken i mean i don't want to play semantics with this thing but that was simply an action taken by them it was not a recommendation to the council so we are voting on roll call i realize that mrs pauser thank okay. you we are voting on the fact that um the site plan is to be denied by us is that how it's That's stated motion Okay, fine. Thank you. Plan is to be what? Denied by us, the review of it. Okay, please. Mayor Warfield? Table, ma'am. There's a difference. Not denied, table. Table. Thank you. Thank you. I understood the motion to be no, not to review the site plan. Right, to table the site plan is what I, what I was trying to bring forth, is similar to what the Planning Commission did, to table this site <clears throat> plan for a future date. And I'm not saying we're denying the site plan. I never said to stop it from a future date. I thought I was pretty eloquent when I said to follow the, site, follow the planning commission's role and just table it. Okay, the motion is to table the site plan request. Thank you. Mayor Warfield? No. McEachern? No. Councilman Dickerson? N yes. Councilman Hattis? No. Councilwoman Dobrovolsky? Yes. Councilwoman Pauser? Yes. Councilwoman Lentini? No. Motion passes. I want to make a motion <coughs> um, to overrule, to not to overrule what the Planning Commission did on September 14th. And I Mayor. think that would take Pro Tem a vote. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes, Madam Clerk. Maybe I'm getting confused, but if we, we probably have aren't the only one. Four, <laughs> four council members that voted no mm -hmm. on Councilman Dickerson's motion, mm -hmm. then doesn't that mean that you would then be reviewing yes. the site plan? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank and you. And I just made another motion. And your motion is? Repeat your motion. She didn't hear it. Please. The motion is to not overrule what the Planning Commission did on September 14th. And that would take a two-thirds vote, right? No. no. <laughs> I don't agree with that statement. Well, it did before. No. That, I, as, I, as I indicated to you before, the, the Planning Commission took no action. So, so your motion is setting aside the fact that it might have a double negative in it. How can, it, it doesn't even make sense because the, the planning commission took no action. How can you overrule yes, something they, when they have taken no action? Yes, they did. They they took the action to table it. That is an action. Yeah, Either approve, they, disapprove or table. No, the, let me read so that there's no doubt what it says in our ordinance. The ordinance says the commission shall approve or disapprove the plan or approve it subject to compliance with such modifications or conditions as may be deemed necessary, etc. It does not make any provision for tabling. Those are the three choices that the planning commission had. 
Mayor Pro Tem, could yes. we please hear the site plan? Yes. Please, Ms. Manns, go ahead. All right. <laughs> we have <coughs> serving um, as representatives of the site plan this evening, Mr. David Del Bonis, uh, Starwood Wasserman, the developer for the project, Mr. Bill Stark, who serves as the architect um, for the project. I would like to reference um, the components of agenda item 9A, which contains the memo that was um, set forth by my staff to the Planning Commission, as well as the application and a map which delineates um, the proposed project. Um, in short, the CVS Pharmacy Corporation has assembled a 1.74 acres of land um, situated at the southwest corner of Illinois and Glenwood Road. It is um, their desire to go forward um, with the plan um, to establish an Arbor drug store operated um, by the CVS Pharmacy Corporation at, the, at that location. Currently, um, a building exists on the site which is vacant. Um, it was uh, previously a retail center that um, would be raised as part of the project. They have um, brought in a rendering of the prototype that would be utilized um, if this plan is approved. Um, you'll note many of the, of the very handsome features about the project, including the establishment of a brick um, facade, a low-scale development, and as I um, show you some more of the detail, you'll I'm certainly pleased at the level of uh, landscape embellishment that's proposed as part of this commercial development. I'll refer um, for your reference to a colored rendering which depicts all four elevations of the building. <coughs> along with um, their proposed um, signage and lighting. This plan uh, provides some of the detail that I'm sure you're most interested in um, related to the project, um, featuring <coughs> the points of um, access um, to the property, as well as traffic orientation, parking, and the footprint um, of the building on the property. Again, um, just for your reference, this is Glenwood Road, this is Newburgh Road, um, this is the perimeter treatments that are being proposed for the most southerly portion of the property and also for the most westerly portions of the property. Um, in that, the staff has been working with the applicants for over a six month period of time on the project. Um, we have little else to offer for consideration to the Planning Commission other than directive uh, interfacing that would need to take place with um, the city related to permits, with the county as well, and a request for additional um, engineering detail in large part related to the paving that's due to take place on the property that was summed up in um, the September 10, 1999 memo. We have indicated 11 contingencies in that regard, and it was a staff recommendation um, to the Planning Commission um, that the request be approved. Thank you, Ms. Mann. I'm prepared to respond to any specific questions that you have. I, though, recognize that your exposure um, to this plan um, is not new, and so I don't want to overstate some of the, the things that you're very well aware of. True. Thank you, Ms. Manns. Yes, I have also a question. Um, Mrs. Mann, can you take the uh, uh, first one? I'd like to see the... Uh, yes, that, no, the one in your hand. Uh, 
The one in the middle, it's the south side of the this building? This is the south elevation, and this is the north elevation. Okay. The, the south side, how high the, the wall on the south side? The from? exterior wall is 20 feet. 20 feet. Okay. So we're talking about the wall? The, 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 the building, yeah. yeah, the building, it oh, it's 20 feet high. That would, would show probably some of the houses nearby could see that wall. I, I think that that's unlikely um, based on the treatments um, that are being proposed and some of the natural topography which exists on the site and will be unaltered by the project. I, is that possible to ask the uh, engineer if they could on the, the top side, the architect, Mr. Uh, on the top side of the wall, if there's some design to fit the neighborhood, some uh, beautification? way to, to, to enhance the building look from the south side, because that is what's going to face some of our residents. I think that a good amount of effort has already gone yeah. into the project in that regard, but it's certainly appropriate to afford Mr. Stark an opportunity to address some of those specifics. What, what you see here, Councillor, is, is the uh, uh, evergreen buffer? Yes, oh, I have no problem with that. Those are going to screen the majority of that, of that wall. I'm talking about the top the side top. of the wall, the very top. It's, it's got a, um, the prototype drawing has a synthetic plaster, uh, dental work, or molding around, around the perimeter to soften it. <coughs> um, further, further on, there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of a, of a hip roof that enhances the, the entrance on the opposite side of the building. If you were standing <coughs> further away, we're talking probably, um, uh, we're guessing five, six, seven hundred feet, uh, you would see the outline of this, of this building uh, in a distance. There's going to be a green screen in front of you, um, which is 35 feet in from the property line. Um, then, then we have uh, <coughs> the brick is, you know, the brick uh, top of the building is softened with a, with a um, synthetic plaster uh, mental molding around the top for a cause. Uh, so I think it is been kind of so often. Uh, did, did you have something else in mind? Yes, um, yes. Can you take that off the cover that please? At the top wall, what I have in mind, let me, I might. Yes, please do. That section here, mm -hmm. that's what's going to face some of the resident on the other side. That's what my main concern is, that in a way you can put some kind of a design of the set, something. <clears throat> They're not looking just boxing wall or something. Well, in proportion, um, what, I, what I was referring to is this, this issue of coping up here. If we have some brick relief panels, which are highlighted here. That yeah, it's in the lower section. That also very simply could be done with some treatment of it along the top. I would, I would suggest that that's, if that's a uh, consideration that would be carried along on the, on the east elevation to, mm -hmm. get around, to create a relief in brick. Uh, we're talking about revealing the brick uh, an inch, mm -hmm. give you a shadow line to, to bring some interest to that, to that exposed high portion of the wall. And that's uh, entirely possible. Um, what could be done? Is there any other discussion amongst anyone up at the council table? Or questions? Could, uh, I have a question for you. Yes, Mr. Dickerson. Could large plantings be placed behind that uh, uh, to cover the brick? I think that's what Mr. Haddis was trying to point out. It's not necessarily how you design the brick, it's just how do you get rid of the brick view from what the neighbors are generally used to looking at is a wooded a, uh, a wooded or green space back there is what the neighbors uh, south of it are looking at right now. Is, is it your intent to cover it with more trees so that no, the no, brick isn't the, showing? The, the general the practice of, of allowing any vines or ivy, ivy growing up on brick or trees close to a brick uh, has a, 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 a detrimental effect to the, to the longevity of the brick and it will cause the brick to decay a lot faster because mold and moss and, will grow on the brick, so you need air to get at it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that any client of mine plant something on or, or right against a, a brick wall like this. However, I want to repeat that I, that I talked to Council Discussler earlier about is that we do have evergreens that are substantial as they go in. Uh, they're, they're, I think they're 20, 24 foot or 20 feet high evergreens. 
uh, they're going to grow rather quickly, and, uh, and, and they're going to screen this, this building. Uh, keeping in mind, you've got a building, you've got uh, evergreens planted uh, 40, 50 some odd feet away from it, 35 more feet is the property line, and then any neighbors obviously aren't built on the property line, they're beyond that. So it's quite a distance. Uh, it's, it's a few hundred feet to any, to any residents uh, to the south of us. Again, not to be redundant, uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, but the investment on the part of the developer in relationship to this site, should it be approved, um, is in the neighborhood of $165,000 dedicated specifically to perimeter land treatments. Um, I didn't want to get into the detail of how many trees, where they'll be planted, what Correct. their caliper are, but we are talking about a substantial investment. We are talking about um, over double what the typical investment is on these type of projects. The trees are mature, and it, it truly is a pleasure to be able to represent a plan to you um, with with that um, with those elements already proposed um, by the developer. Thank you, Ms. Vance. Mrs. Hamlet. Well, I'd like to refer to my large investment to me, which is my home, which I have the misfortune of having right next to where they want to build the Arbor Drugs. And in during the course of natural events, I would have approached the Planning Commission with a problem with the drive-through window on my side, which will be where my bedroom window and my bathroom window are. Um, it's my understanding now that it's gone from being a store that closed in the evening to having a 24-hour drive-through window. I have a problem with that drive-through window being there. Uh, my home sits six to eight feet higher, and uh, there will be a problem with my privacy and headlights coming through there, et cetera. I think it's something that needs to be considered. I would at least hope that you would consider me in some small area. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hamlet. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. Um, may I respond? Yes. I would hope that you would. <coughs> um, it's not my understanding that that, that drive-through window is, is a 24-hour operation. Thank um, you for clarifying that. That's changed. Uh, I'm not aware of that. Um, the, uh, the fact that the, there would be headlights going by um, and, and shining in her in her windows is highly unlikely. Uh, partly be due to the topography of the site, and mostly due to the evergreens that are heavily screened and a screen wall, a, a brick wall that I think we have along um, yeah. along that side. So there's, a, there's an eight foot high brick wall that was that was put up. So you have a brick wall, you have evergreens. You, you've got the topography all preventing any headlights from shining in, into this, this uh, woman's uh, uh, windows. <clears throat> the, uh, this drive-through is not a drive-through that is used like a McDonald's or a bank or something like that. This is a drive-through that's used for picking up prescriptions. Um, it's only added in these stores because the competition has put in drive-throughs. If a store had their choice, you know, the drive-through would be eliminated, but unfortunately, the competition being such as it is, uh, drive-throughs are necessary. It's not something that's promoted by CVS. It's not something that's, that's uh, it's offered to the public. You get a sick child or something in the evening and you need a prescription filled, you call it up and you get the child in the car and you, and you, and, 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 and you pick up the uh, prescription without having to take the child out of the car in a, in a cold winter night at, at 10 o'clock at night or 9 o'clock at night. This is something that's, that's going to be beneficial to the, to the citizens and the, and the, and the, uh, and the customers and the, and, the, and the residents of the city of Wayne. Thank you. Mrs. Hamlet. I'd like to know what assurance I have that it's not a 24-hour store since that did come up during the court the last time we were in court. And um, I would also like to know if there's any restrictions on that drive through window in the ordinance. Um, I can't speak to the ordinance. Thank you. I can't speak to the ordinance. Um, I'm not an attorney, but we have <coughs> client attorneys here. Um, I can assure you that the, this is, uh, I'm talking to Mr. Del Bonas, uh, who just nodded to me that uh, is of, 
Um, when we left Rhode Island uh, six hours ago, uh, this was not a 24-hour store. Um, CVS is not making this a 24-hour store. If that's part of your plan and, and want to make that a condition, I'm sure that that would be fine. Um, I don't know, again, to answer her uh, statement about the ordinance on, on drive-up windows, I can't speak to that. Thank you. Mr. Clark. I, I don't believe we have a specific ordinance on drive-in windows in the city of Wayne. Uh, the, the, there is none. As long as the zoning ordinances and the building codes are complied with, um, then you're in compliance. And those building codes and ordinances talk to many of the issues that have been uh, talked about already this evening. The uh, lighting, uh, you'll recall, that was talked about in some of the other site plans, the illumination and how the lights are directed, et cetera, and those things are reviewed by the staff. But there is no specific ordinance regarding drive throughs that I'm aware of. Thank you, Mr. Clark. This is Pauser. What's going to happen, um, worst case scenario, if this, apparently, it's, this site plan is going to get approved tonight? And then you go to 9M with the petitions, and it's going to go to the vote of the people. And what if they say, no, you can't rezone it? You know, what? Does CVS want to invest this money before it goes to the vote of the people? They may. It may just sit empty. <laughs> they may. Because it is, it does have to go to the vote of the people because they came in with enough signatures and that's what our charter says. You're perfectly welcome to vote. Thank you. I have another question. Mr. Yes, Hess, why don't I put a motion on the floor so then we can discuss. I would move we approve this and with the added uh, item 12 that you agree that this will not be a 24-hour store. Uh, I, I, I don't know if he have any problem to add the bottom design be matched on the top of the wall, the brick design. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. We were, you have any problem we with don't that? have a problem doing that. Those two items then. That'd be uh, number 12 and number 13. Okay. Uh, uh, that so move. Is there support? S support. Motion has been made and seconded. I have a couple questions for the attorney, ma'am. Um, do you plan to remove any of the structures? Uh, if you receive approval here tonight, do you plan to remove any of the structures uh, on those two parcels? If we should take title to the property, I would fully expect that we would take, remove the structures. So, if there's, so you're telling us that if there is a referendum issue before us, you're not willing to sit back and wait to see what the people want, you will start dozing and removing buildings? I know of no legal compulsion of the owner of that property with a properly approved site plan and a building permit to await the results of the referendum. Um, I'd like to ask. Yes. Okay, what I'm hearing here is that you will, there's a possibility that you might go through, bulldoze everything down, build your building, and leave it there empty. Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? No, that's so sorry. Leave it there empty? Leave it there. That's what I thought I just heard that you said, well, we'll just leave it there. With, I mean, you well, can't I, move into it if it's a vote of the people and they vote it down, then what are you going to do? I guess this at that point a, it would be a question of what a court decides we're allowed to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. The referendum existence does not stop anybody from proceeding with the development of this property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see there is a question in the back. I don't know whom it is. Would you please come up? Mm -hmm. Mrs. McEachern addressed the people of the city of Wayne, and I would like to do also. What you are planning to do tonight, council members, is exactly this. You are planning to approve the site plan allow them to bulldoze the property, 
You don't care how the people vote. You're disenfranchising not only us, not only the 13,000 plus signatures that we got, but the entire city of Wayne will be disenfranchised by this move. Because what's going to happen is that if you approve this meeting tonight, and you know this is what's going to happen, they're going to go ahead and tear down the buildings, start with their new building, and then if the people of Wayne have the audacity to vote that that property should be not rezoned commercial, but put back to residential, what you're going to do is say, we can't do that because we'll get sued. So what you're doing tonight is disenfranchising the citizens of the city of Wayne. And I hope the citizens of the city of Wayne rise up and realize exactly what's going on. This is a person that really has needed to have been heard from for some time and has been very, very quiet, both of these people who are being disenfranchised, so to speak. Mrs. Dawkins? Mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Hermats? Mm -hmm. It's okay. You'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Dennis and I would like to take this opportunity to thank the council for letting us talk tonight. It's important to let the residents know that through much consideration, we are allowing the sale of our property to CVS Arbor drug developers rather than being forced out of our home. There's been a lot of misinformation given to the community. And as residents, we have the right to sell our home to anyone at any time. The city is not forcing us to sell. We are not the little old man that is being forced to sell. At this time, we feel our rights are being violated. We weighed the pros and the cons of selling our property for over four months. We finally decided that it was in the best interest for the city of Wayne to have a CVS Arbor's Drugs redevelop that corner, a new drugstore that could serve us, the community, the, us, the, co the consumers, or the customers, with the drive-through window. Does the public realize that the current drugstore on the s northeast corner of Newburgh and Glenwood will be closing after 20 years of servicing our area? The Arbor Drugstore at Wayne Road in Glenwood will also be closing because of the changes in customers' needs. They want a drive-through to service our community. It's true that the Wayne residents will have a new Rite Aid at the corner of Michigan Avenue and Wayne Road. However, for all the residents in our immediate area having to, to get across the railroad tracks without being stopped for 20 minutes and double back to Michigan Avenue and loop around the Ford truck plant traffic and go to the drugstore is not really convenient. This would affect everyone who lives in the Thinbark, Tanglewood, Mill Point, Whitney No, Legacy Estates, Glenwood Heights, etc. This emotional roller coaster we have been on for one year. One year. It's time we want. My sister got me this card of a roller coaster, and on the inside it says, Sometimes the ride gets you sick. I'm tired of it. We want it over with. Thank you. Sir Mats. Uh, let's Call see question. here. No. No, there's some more. They do want to talk right now. Uh, yes, ma'am. <coughs> Hi, I'm Brenda Stroud. I've been a resident for over 20 years here in Wayne. This is my daughter, Shelda. During the Will Fest, my daughter signed a petition not knowing, just going by what was stated to her about an 82-year-old man's home being taken away by the city of Wayne. Is that true? No, no it is not. Well, and I, I would like to have my name taken off that petition because I was lied to, and I don't like to be lied to. I like to be told the truth, and I would like to know more about the petition before I sign a petition, and I let the truth told me to me, not lied to me. And she signed the petition feeling sorry for this lady's 82-year-old father <coughs> that has lived here for many years and, and paid taxes on a property which he kept up and all. I'm very hurt 
knowing that she was lied to, and I tried to tell her, and I do know that her name could not be legally taken off. It's like signing a contract. She should have read the petition, and it cannot be just taken off because she changed her mind. But uh, I'm just, she, her story is not the only one. I've been told that if we do not put this on the ballot, but for uh, November, you know, and the people vote no for that arbor not to go up or whatever, that they, the city can come in and just take all of our homes and fix them any way that they want to because they went from door to door up off of forest and everything telling people that if they do not vote and sign the petition that they may be losing their home to commercial if, if the city, you know, wanted to decide to take it away from them like they did this, uh, this 82-year-old man. I do not take it to be fair in the way that the petition was handled. And I think the people of Wayne needs to know really what they actually signed that day. Thank you. I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Hayes. I think you should move the question, though. Uh, I guess we'll move the question at this oh, point in time. I yes. think before you move the question, you should let Ms. Dawkins defend that statement because I believe that, that they misunderstood because I was oh. there when she was passing this petition. Oh, to this particular lady? Yes. I, I, I'd like to address this issue if I may, please. Okay, fine. My father is the 82-year-old man. His property was not threatened, but he lives across the street exactly across the street from the Hermat's property, which they bought as residential property. <coughs> there was an ordinance on the books that said that if you own 20% of the property facing the property to be rezoned, you had the right to protest. My father filed a valid protest because the first time it came before this council, as you all are well aware, you voted to rezone the entire Hermat's property commercial. My father filed a valid protest. I took it to a surveyor and had it surveyed. We own 22% of the property facing the property to be rezoned. My dad has paid taxes on that property for over 50 years. And by allowing Arbor Drugs to split the property and say, only the northerly most 85 feet will be rezoned, the southerly most 35 feet will be kept residential, 1AA, the definition of which is that it has to have 100 foot of frontage. <coughs> Excuse me, so I don't know how that can be called residential 1A, but my father was denied the right to protest, and that's exactly, exactly what I told that girl. I explained it to her in great detail, and I'm sure there are hundreds of people out there who will come and tell you I have the same exact story every time I tell it and that's the story. My father was denied the right to protest. John, Thank you, Ms. Dawkins. You have indeed reiterated that many times. Um, I do believe that, um, you know, we have he said one other thing, said. just briefly. Mm -hmm. I never, we never said any house that the city could come in and do any house they felt like doing at any time. What we said was, if you set a precedent by rezoning residential property into commercial, that they have set a precedent, and it is going to be difficult to deny anyone else who has residential property next to commercial and wants to see its own commercial also. Thank you. The question has been called. The motion is going to be voted on at this point in time. Would you please restate the motion, Madam Clerk? The motion is to... standing before It is closed at this point in time. Thank you, Mr. Johnson because there are others that had wished to speak too. It's time to move on. Thank you. Ma'am, may I ask you a further question? That's not right. If he's asked, he should be able to turn and face the people and ask if he should speak. That should be in our Constitution, shouldn't it? Is that right, Mr. Attorney? If he turns and asks us people if he should speak, then it should be up to us. Not this, to this council sets its own rules as to who... <laughs> Please 
Madam Clerk, will you restate the motion? The motion is... There is enough. Stop it, please, right now. Thank you. The motion is to approve the site plan as presented with two additional stipulations. One is that it not be a 24-hour drive-up window operation and that there be a softening treatment to the brick wall. Thank you. I suppose it probably had better be a voice vote, so we shall proceed. Mayor Warfield? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem McEachern? Aye. Councilman Dickerson? No. Councilman Hannes? Aye. Councilwoman Dobrovolsky? No. Councilwoman Pauser? No. Councilwoman Lentini? Aye. You have four votes in the affirmative and three in the negative. Motion passes. Madam, uh, no, I, I would ask that you continue the meeting. Uh, I had a procedure today, mm -hmm. but I would uh, like to go to item uh, 9M so that I could... Uh, Fine, thank you. 9M then, please, Madam Clerk. Item 9M is a referendary petition concerning the rezoning of parcels 899.13 and 899.15, except for the southerly 35 feet of 15. My office has canvassed the signatures on those petitions, and my report is before you. Right. Would you like to state that report? Thank you. Madam Clerk. The um, petition sheets were filed on September 14th. There were 1,482 signatures, and we were able to um, verify, I have Friday's memo here, a little over 1,300 petitions for you. So that does exceed the 1,251 required. What is the pleasure of the council? I would like to make a motion that this um, be put on the November 2nd ballot. Support. I'll support it. All right. The motion has been made and uh, supported. Uh, any discussion in regard to the matter? Okay. No discussion? All right. We'll, we'll take a vote on it then. Fine. Aye. We're going to take a roll call for that. Okay, this is a motion to place this referendum request on the November 2nd ballot. Mm -hmm. Mayor Warfield? Aye. Mayor Pro Tim McEachern? Aye. Councilman Dickerson? Aye. Councilman Hattis? Aye. Councilwoman Dobrovolsky? Aye. Councilwoman Pauser? Aye. Councilwoman Lentini. Aye. Uh -huh. It's a unanimous vote. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. All right. I believe at this point in time we're at general items for consideration. Are we or no? Bit awards. Bit awards. Bit awards. Okay. Bit awards. Five. Madam Clerk. The next item is bid awards, and there is one cons consideration of bid award for the 1999 joint and crack ceiling project to be paid from the major and local streets budgets. So move to accept the low beds for Michigan Joint Ceiling Incorporated Livonia for $58,480. Support. Motion has been made and supported. Uh, is there any discussion in regard to this matter? Yeah, when will it be done? Uh, Ramsey. Right here. Uh, the question from the council is, when will the crack ceiling work begin and when should it be completed by? Well, first of all, we have to sign a contract. We will take about three weeks. And then right after the body should start, it shouldn't take more than three weeks either. So I, I would believe by the end of uh, October of the latest. Thank you. Is this the only one that's going to be done for, um, for joint this request. budget year? Yes. 
Motion has been made and supported. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right, six ordinances and amendments that is being taken from the agenda at this point in time due to request by the city attorney. I would appreciate if you would. There's been a flurry of activity by the Wayne County's prosecutor's office, the right. MAMA, the Michigan Association of Municipal Attorneys, and until it all settles down and I can review it, I'd like the, the council to delay in acting these new ordinances. We need right, and what are they in regard to, Mr. Clark? New drunk driving uh, penalties and driving while your license is suspended penalties. All right, fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, item 8K on your agenda today is exactly what Mr. Clark is speaking is about. Speaking so to. Mm -hmm. fine. the letter from the Wayne County Prosecutor. Fine. So we do oh. ask that you defer these to a future meeting, and I think that you can order that. Or does that take a motion? Uh, well, I'd ask that they be taken off the agenda last for, week, John, when I got the right, flurry of letters from everybody, and so if the council takes no action, I, I just need some time to review all the comments being made by the other them bodies. Yes. Yes. So laws. order them deferred then. Okay, fine. Thank you. All right. Comments from persons in audience and matters not covered by the council agenda. Yes, Mr. Blackwell. Mayor Pro Tem and representatives of the people. My name is Mark Blackwell and I live on Haroon Boulevard. Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government. I sat in the audience and listened attentively to Mike Seneft, a friend and a property owner. He came before this council and stood in front of you, our representatives of the people, to state his complaints. He was exercising his constitutional right to be heard. It seemed, though, his last words fell upon deaf ears. I was standing right here on this very same spot when Mike Seneff began to have a very serious physical emergency. As I stood here, I became nervous inside and felt very uncomfortable as to what was being said by Mayor Pro Tem Donna McEachran. I couldn't believe what I was seeing or hearing. Mayor Pro Tem Donna McEachran was sitting there and I felt, in my opinion, she was being cold-hearted and calloused about what was happening right in front of her. I don't know about the other citizens and residents, but as for myself, this is not the type of representation that I want on this council. The only council member, a representative of the people, who had excused herself to leave and go to Annapolis Hospital was Shirley Pauser. At least she showed some respect and compassion. This administration should have never, never been allowed to put a property owner, a person, through such an ordeal. I thought that this was supposed to be a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. In conclusion, I would like to leave you with this quote from John Adams. To maintain a republic requires virtue and simplicity among all orders and degrees of men. Virtue must underlay all institutional arrangements if they are to be healthy and strong. The principles of democracy are as easily destroyed as human nature is corrupted. Thank you, Mr. Blackwell, for your political message. Yes, uh, Mr. Garrett. My face should be familiar to most of you. I have been in business in this town for about 40 years. I've appeared before several councils asking for permissions to do several things. 
At one time, I had a burning need to try and change a single ordinance. I went through the same process these folks had, and my effort failed. A few years later, I bought another property over on Chestnut Street. I wasn't in the property barely a few weeks when I again bumped into the infrastructure of government. Only this time I was a little more prepared. And the infrastructure was forced to give. Not because it wanted to, because I was right. And I was going to make sure they knew I was right. I was misdirected. I was young. I had all the answers, and I hadn't heard all the questions. But doing what I normally do when I'm frustrated, I just went back to work. Eventually, my property had so many of my trucks on it that customers couldn't park there. Then it dawns on me why maybe that wasn't the best place in the city for